In this lesson, we will use the traceroute utility to assess organizational security. This lesson is part of a video series that gets you ready for the hands-on part of the CompTIA Security Plus exam. This lesson is all about giving you hands-on experience with the 4.0 Operations and Incident Response section of the exam. Let's get ready to dive in. So, what is Traceroute? Traceroute is a network diagnostic utility that determines the route taken by packets across an IP network. Network administrators and system administrators typically use Traceroute. Traceroute can be used whenever there is a need to diagnose network connectivity issues or analyze networking routing paths. It's also a software tool that can be used on various operating systems, including Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Traceroute is used to identify bottlenecks, troubleshoot network connectivity problems, and analyze the routing behavior of packets. How does Traceroute work? Traceroute works by sending a series of packets with increasing time to live TTL values and recording the intermediate router's responses, allowing it to determine the path taken by the packets from the source to the destination. So we're back with the companion guide, which you can find through the link in the show notes below. Also, if you enjoy this content, please subscribe to the channel and ensure you never miss any new videos. So we have our Traceroute companion guide on the left. We also have Kali Linux on the right. We're ready to go through our uh, checklist. And once again, this is a checklist and not a do list. So we're not reading it step by step. We're just making sure that the steps have been completed. So it says over here, launch a terminal. I can do this a couple of ways. So one way is I can go into Kali Linux over here and I can go ahead and type in terminal and I get a terminal emulator this way. And we'll go ahead and do that. So we have the terminal emulator. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so we can have a little bit more real estate. And it says I have the option here of typing trace route either by domain name or by IP address. So we'll do a little bit of both. So I'm going to do trace route on the Kali side. We want to be here. I'm going to do trace route. And we see we get some output over here using it by um, domain name, or if I want to, I can just use up arrow here and I can do it by IP address. So I'm going to do trace route and 8.8.8.8. These are safe uh, IP addresses, 8.8.8, sometimes called quad eight is Google's DNS server. And we get that. So we have the different outputs. This is google.com, which is the web server. This is the DNS server. Uh, we did the trace route. I hit enter and this is good over here and it says now we can observe the output. So let's do that again. I'm going to clear the screen on the Kali side, get my up arrow and I want to look at it from the DNS server side and take a look at the output and let's observe the output and get a couple of things under our belt here. So first let's take a look at this map here so we can see what some of the good round trip times. So for starters. We're trace routing uh, from this host machine over to Google's DNS servers. We say a 30 hops max, which means that we do not want to cross more than 30 routers. This is the byte packets size. And by default, Traceroute will send three packets and measure the round trip time. And it keeps doing that to every router that it gets to until it gets to its destination. And how do we know if these speeds are fast or not? Well, it depends where you are on the network. On your local area, local area network, you're expecting to be uh, less than one millisecond. That's usually a good speed. And you see these are coming in. They're performing well on the local network. I'm on the 10.0.2 network. This is my local gateway. This is another gateway that's on the local network or on this side. And then I get to these three asterisks and these three asterisks mean that the router decided not to respond to the trace route request. And that could be for a variety of reasons. One, it could mean that the router is not configured because trace route is considered a low priority protocol. So it didn't want to use precious bandwidth or resources, or it's just not configured for security reasons. It just doesn't want you to know that that router was used to transfer the packets. As we continue, we see here that we are now outside of the 10.10 .10 network. I'm on to the internet proper. 
I happen to be at a location that's using Optimum Online and it gives us the res resolution of this IP address so I can get the domain name as well from this IP address and it continues onto the internet and then eventually it gets over to Google's DNS server. So that's what a trace route looks like. We can use either the IP address or we can use the domain name. We have a 30 hop max limit and we're using just um, three packets for the round trip time. And this is our table to measure the performance based on how far we are connecting to that end device. So in this case, Google's DNS is usually in the United States. So we're looking at either a regional or a national network. We're not international. So these are decent performance metrics here for Traceroute. Okay, so let's continue. So we have a couple of things we need to go through on a companion guide. One is we can use the uh, no host name resolution when we're dealing with our trace route. So for right now, if you notice when I do trace route by default, trace route is going to try and do host name resolution by giving me the name of this IP address. I can decide to not use that by using the minus N. So it says no host name resolution and it's only going to give me the IP addresses. One, that tends to be a little faster in terms of the output. And then two, it gives me a little bit of a cleaner output in terms of the results. So you see in this case here, I have the same 10 hop count. I get over to Google's DNS, but we are not doing host name resolution in this example. Another option that you may want to have under your tool belt. And I'm going to head and select that. The other thing here is we talked about the 30 hops max. And this is where if Google goes, if the trace rod goes beyond the 10 hop or the 30 hop, it times out and it stops entirely. Most of the times this is not an issue because we're on local or regional or national um, networks. When we get to international networks, that could be an issue. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm over here in the United States. I'm going to clear my screen. Actually, we want to go back on this side over here. I want to be on the Cali side. I'm going to clear my screen so you can see that. And let's use the right command this time. And I'm going to uh, basically ping India time so we can get that IP address. You know, let's just go right into it and trace route to it. So I'm going to trace route and I'm going to go ahead and put in India Times, which is basically the same newspaper as the New York Times, but it's um, in India and it's India Times. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to India Times. I'm going to trace route to that. So I'm just going to back this out here and I'm going to do India Times. And my cable is acting up. And let's see what the results look like. So in this case, what we see here is that the hop count was exceeded. So we were trying to do a trace route. I went through the typical route that I normally would go out from this host over to the internet. This looks like it's going over international shores. This is Akamai, Corsite. Then we get to a bunch of routers that decided not to disclose their location. And then ultimately it timed out. We exceeded the hop count. So I can go ahead and actually change that if I wanted to. And let's go ahead and select this, by the way, on our housekeeping side of things. So I can change that hop count and see if things will happen. So let's do it two ways. One, we're going to come under. So I'm going to clear my screen. And in this case here, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and actually do a trace route. I'm going to find one that we did before trace route and this one's going to just be a regular one and in this case here when we do a trace out my uh regular without the command let's see what it looks like so it gives me the 30 hops max but in this case here let's just say i know that this is going to take me 10 hops to get to google's dns server i may want to restrict that and let's just say that the maximum hop count i'm going to make it five and the reason why I may want to do that is because in the previous example, when we saw we were going overseas, I may want to say, you know what, after 20 or 30 hops, after 20 hops, 
I just want to stop. I don't want to trigger any alarms. I just want to keep things more on the domestic side of the house. And you can do that by controlling the hop count, either by uh, lowering it to keep it under the typical 10 or 30 hops. Or if you want to, you can maximize it and go beyond 30 and try and get to that destination. So I encourage you to explore with um, some international friendly sites, try to trace route and by playing with the hop count number. So we'll go ahead and tick that off as completed. And we're going to go ahead and take a look again at the different types of uh, hop counts by default. So the packet sizes. So what TraceRoute will do is give you three packets by default. So let's clear screen and see that just nice and clean again. So I'm on the Kelly side. And I'm just going to do a regular uh, trace route to Google's DNS. And you see that it uses three packets and to get a round trip time, then it moves on to the next host, three packets, and then it moves on three packets, so on and so forth. We see that the packet latency or the delay, the time, the round trip time starts to change a little bit as we get outside of our network. That's in line with our range here, our range meter. But if I wanted to have more packets, I can set that setting here too. So I can do trace route. And in this case, here's the query command. So it's minus Q. And let's say from three, I'm gonna go to four. So you can see that the difference here. So by default, trace route is going to give you three. And if you want to change that, you can change the query count and you can change the packets to four. Now the idea, why would we want to do this? The idea is that more data is better information. So maybe I want to send more packets to get a better average time and round trip time for all of this information. Then what I can do here is I'm going to jump around a little bit. Again, I can do the timeout options as well. This time here, I just went with um, the minus Q just so you can see the count. And we're not going to do the UDP, DCP, uh, TCP. I just wanted to save that for you in this case here. But here's what we will do here in terms of output. On the output file, we're going to take all of this data and we're going to output it to a file. So let's just say I wanted to save this information here. So I want to save this for analysis a little bit later. And this is a good example. Why not? And I'm going to output it with the uh, greater than sign and I'm going to call it tr.txt. I can rename it later. And what's happening now is that it outputted that file. It outputted the results to a file. So rather than to the screen, it went right to the file. So I can cat tr.txt and let's see what happens. Cat. This is uh, just so I can send it to the screen. tr. and these are the results. So rather than send it to the screen, we sent it to a file. If I wanted to manipulate that file, I can nano that file, which is a text editor, just like notepad or anything else. I'm going to tr.txt. And now I can edit this file and say, this is the output. Not bad. I'm not going to save that. This was just for demonstration purposes. So we'll go ahead. This portion here, I'm saving as a companion guide. So you can go ahead and use this as your option to use trace route. And you can use instead of IC, ICMP, you can use UDP and you're going to specify a port. Now, this part is important. Trace route is a utility that you can use also on Windows and it's short for trace RT. And it's a command line utility primarily used in Windows operating systems, including Windows 10. And it works the same way as trace route. The things to remember is that if you see this on the exam, trace route full is Linux, usually Mac OS, Kali Linux, Ubuntu, or all the different distribution of Linux. And trace RT is window. Windows based works the same. And remember, although in a lot of documentations, you see that trace route is for grammar speaking, it's uppercase T, but it is case sensitive. You want to make sure that trace route is all lowercase as with many other 
Unix commands. Okay, with that public uh, service announcement aside, I'm going to go back into the companion guide. I'm on the Linux side. I'm going to clear the screen so you can see where some of these companions uh, come from. So what is it that we do to, to get some more information? So, so far we see that if we use the command, whether it's uh, ping so far or any other uh, command, we can trace route. I'm gonna just back all this stuff out here. I could have gone in a different way, but I just want you to see that. I'm going to dash dash help. So dash dash help is going to give me a lot of the switches that we were using. You see version, you see DCCP. There's a couple of them here that we haven't seen. There are more. And of course, if you want to use more comprehensive documentation, I'm going to clear the screen to get us back on top again. You can use the man page, short for manual, and it's going to be man, and you type in the command. In this case here is trace route, full word. And now you get the manual page, and the manual page is going to give you a lot more details about how to use uh, trace route. So for the purpose of the companion guide, I'm going to take off that we know that there's a Windows version. We know how to get the help command. We know how to use the man command. And of course, we want you to experiment with different options, observe the output to understand how they affect not just the ping command, but also the traceroute command.